Okay, looks like I'm recording. There was a question on the uh, FreeNAS forum about what uh, uh, or how to go about mounting an ISO um, so that they could boot their FreeNAS uh, or boot their Supermicro server board from uh, the FreeNAS ISO to install FreeNAS. And uh, they were having some trouble getting that to work. So I thought I'd show a little demo uh, using my system. Um, one of the things to notice is this warning right here. Whenever you run your uh, remote management web page, it's going to come up and warn you that your Java is out of date. But as long as you have the latest version of Java installed, this is kind of an erroneous warning because it's simply saying that it doesn't match the version that it's expecting to see, which you know, I just a few minutes ago, literally just a few minutes ago, installed the latest version of Java. So I've got the latest and greatest version of Java, and this is still telling me that I need to update my Java, but it's like I say, it's not true. You just cancel that warning, and don't worry about that. The uh, Once you cancel that, if your server is up and running, you'll see a preview here of what's on the screen, uh, or what would be on the screen of your server, or this will be just a blank white square if it's nothing on your server. Uh, like I said, for example, if your server is shut down, which mine's powered on currently. Anyway, you can click on that space, and it should give you this little launcher down here. And you can click on Open, and it will open up your... Well, it'll open up this warning here telling you that it's a security risk. And then you can accept the risk and run it. And then, after it thinks about it for a minute, it'll actually pop up the uh, virtual console. Now, the Java Virtual Console is where you load your virtual media. Um, you click on your virtual storage, and you bring this uh, to CD-ROM ISO, and change that to ISO file, and then you go over here to open your ISO image, and let's see, I want to go to my downloads, and over here to... FreeNAS ISO, open that, and then plug it in. And this works like it was a USB drive that's plugged in. And one of the reasons I wanted to have this open when I did that is you can see the FreeNAS is actually seeing that hardware be, see, IPMI Virtual CD-ROM 3000. It's seeing a, a USB virtual, well, actually it serves up as a SCSI device, but it's seeing that virtual device be plugged in it's recognizing it and trying to, I guess it's trying to mount the CD. But anyway, it's an active, ready-to-use device at this point in time. And so the thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to reboot the server to that ISO just to show how it's done to make sure that there's no questions. Um, this will take a minute. But, and while that's running, let me show you this one other thing that you have to do with Java. Um, you have to go into the Java configuration uh, utility. Let me hit the delete key a couple times on this, because just like a real computer, to go into the configuration uh, into the BIOS boot screen, you have to hit delete a couple of times. Here we go. Yep, entering setup. So that's ready to go. It'll do its thing. Over here in this uh, Java control panel, though, you have to go to the security tab, and you have to put in the IP address. This is one of the reasons why you need to set up a static IP address on your FreeNAS server, because you always want your FreeNAS, or at least the IPMI port on your FreeNAS server, you want it to always be at the same address, it's because you need to put that address into your Java control panel so that your Java control panel will run this applet, because this applet right here will not run at all. It will refuse to launch if it's not listed here as being on the accepted site list. Uh, if you don't have it in your, in your exceptions list, you can't run this virtual console. You'll never be able to do this. So you put the IP address in your, in your list here, and you save that. Once you've saved that, then you can run your virtual console. And in your IPMI settings in your virtual console here, you can go over here and set your, oops, went too far, IPMI. You can set your IPMI network configuration 
So you could go in here and change your IP uh, IP address in your in your configuration, but we don't want to do that right now because they were connected to it and it would mess things up. But uh, the thing that we're really in here for is to look at this uh, boot override. Uh, the thing we want to do, since we plugged in that IPMI virtual CD-ROM drive, now we have the option of booting from the CD-ROM drive. We want to select that as our boot override. This is the boot menu for the CD-ROM. We would do the free NAS installer. And uh, once you boot up off of that uh, free NAS installer, that will give you all the uh, ability that you need to install free NAS. That's... Uh, going to take a minute because it, even though it's a virtual CD-ROM, it's not super fast. So, probably faster than a real CD-ROM, but still, it takes a minute to boot. Okay, here we are at the uh, at the menu, and then we can choose to install an upgrade, and then we can switch, or we can select the drives that we want to install to, and it'll let us uh, pick a pair of drives uh, and do the installation. Now, I'm not going to do the installation because I already have an installation. I don't want to overwrite, but uh, that would that would let us install uh, FreeNAS right there. And over here, just out of, you know, just to show you, you can refresh the preview image on this screen over here, and it'll show you the same thing here that we are seeing on this Java console. And uh, so let's go ahead and shut this down. Do we want to? I want to reboot. Okay. And while that's rebooting, I want to unplug this. And then, with that being plugged out, instead of plugged in, there's no CD, and this should boot back to the regular uh, FreeNAS install that's on those USB drives we were just looking at. So. Okay, that seems to be working the way it should. So we go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and close this now. And closing this console doesn't affect the functionality of the computer. It's kind of like turning off a monitor. If you had a monitor plugged into the computer, you just turn it off the monitor. The computer continues running in the background just like it normally would. So that's the uh, brief introduction to Java Virtual Console in uh, uh, on a super micro system. And uh, every time you go back to that main page, it's going to give you this warning. Uh, every time you can cancel it and ignore that because it's just not important. So that's all there is to that. Thank you. Have a great day.